evening, everyone. Uh, today I'll be responding to the major claim that uh, video games which depict violence are innocent of causing violence. The uh, advocate to this claim made two large secondary claims, which were as follows. One, video games are used as a scapegoat for school shootings and mass shootings. And two, that video games can be an effective outlet for rage. My overall response to this claim is that the evidence given is insufficient in proving the arguer's main claim. Uh, the arguer's uh, first secondary claim is supported by several uh, sub-points. The first I will be addressing uh, for the secondary claim that video games are used as a scapegoat for school shootings is that the advocate starts out by using a hypothetical example stating that when mass shootings happen, the name you remember the most is the one perpetrating the act. You don't remember the names of the victims. From this uh, hypothetical follows reasoning that uh, since the media glorifies violence, people who want their mark left on society will turn to violence for their own glory. Uh, however, no hard evidence is given to back up the claim that media violence has a more profound effect than video game violence when it comes to glorifying that violence, since the main claim was that video games are innocent of perpetuating violence. Video games reward violence all the time. They give uh, their players points or in-game currency, and some games go really deep into glorifying violence. Uh, GTA 3, for example, allowed you to buy a prostitute and then subsequently kill her to get your dollars back. Uh, the advocate does nothing to differentiate between the video game glorification of violence and the media glorification of violence, and as such this doesn't disqualify the possibility that video games may predispose a perpetrator to act violently. Uh, the second subpoint under his, uh, the first secondary claim was that the advocate states that poor U.S. gun control laws are the real culprit behind mass shootings. Uh, as an example, Australia, uh, it is given, is a country basically bereft of guns and has nearly no mass shootings. This is obvious. A country that has no guns won't have people getting shot in it too often. Uh, however, the major claim is that video games cause violence, not specifically gun violence, not specifically shootings. With that in mind, this evidence is, uh, this evidence poorly advances the main point, as certain crime rates in Australia have still risen since uh, gun violence, or gun laws were put into a more stricter place. For example, there has been an observed 5% growth per year in violent assault cases from 1997 to 2005, and a number of sexual assault cases, which is up nearly 25% in 2013 than in uh, 1996. This information was provided by the Australian Institute of Criminology, updated uh, in 2015. Uh, these numbers, also these numbers have grown over the years as the video game industry itself has grown, which could open up possibilities of a comparison between the two, which was not addressed. The third subpoint is that the advocate states that violent video games do not alter mental health. Uh, a study is cited uh, without mention of who the study was by, where it came from, or how it was conducted. And the study suggested that exposure to violent video games was not associated with increased bullying or delinquency in children. To contest this, I present an article published by the American Psychological Association titled Violent Video Game Effects on Aggression, Empathy, and Prosocial Behavior in Eastern and Western Countries. This study collected data concerning uh, aggressive behavior, aggressive cognition, desensitization, and empathy uh, about video game players of all ages. The study suggests that exposure to violent video games is a casual risk factor for increased aggressive behavior, aggressive cognition, and for decreased empathy and prosocial behavior. The study was done in 2009. Me. Uh, so basically, what this study suggests is that video games are indeed a factor in certain mental health problems. 
The secondary claim was that video games can be an effective outlet for rage. The advocate's underlying argument here was that video games provide catharsis for anger and aggression within a person. This actually undermines the major claim that video games are innocent of causing violence. A study conducted in 2008 by Verona and Sullivan of the Department of Psychology of University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign showed that reductions in heart rate after an aggressive response predicted the most intense aggression in subsequent tests. These results are in line with the catharsis theory, theory of aggression, which suggests that while a cathartic event may reduce immediate, immediate aggressive drive, the likelihood of future aggression is higher afterwards. Therefore, if video games are inspiring cathartic events in people who play them, the, uh, this evidence suggests that it is also perpetuating uh, future aggressive actions. As such, after considering all this information, it's uh, quite apparent that the evidence provided is insufficient in proving that violent video games are innocent of causing violence, and it's difficult to make sweeping claims such as this because it is a relatively new art form. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> All right, well, you label the main claims at the beginning pretty clearly. The first claim apparently is divided into three parts, which gets a little bit confusing because we've got label one, and then the first point under that is one. So that's a little bit awkward. I think if you just labeled the uh, inference that was being responded to, you'd be fine, and you could maybe leave out that second numbering system there. Uh, the challenge on the first point is... Uh, you know, that uh, there's no hard evidence on this particular issue. It seems to be a hypothetical that's being dealt with. That's, that's an okay press. You did have a nice example about how Grand Theft Auto does seem to incentivize uh, you know, violence in some way, shape, or form. I don't remember what the advocates' evidence on these particular points were, and so without much to contrast there, it's a little bit hard to say whether or not your example is you know, uh, an adequate answer on that particular point. On the uh, second point on this one, I thought that you did a good job kind of dismissing the gun control issue as not being related to the argument that we're talking about. And in fact, in Australia, there continues to be uh, issues related to um, assaults in all kinds of places, even if there aren't guns. And I, I think it's a little bit of a stretch to say, you know, that the video games have become more ubiquitous in Australia as crime has gone up. I think that that might be jumping on that bandwagon a little bit quick. But in essence, I think your real argument seems to be that gun control hasn't minimized any crime. It's likely that there is, in fact, some relationship here to these sorts of things. And, um, you know, like I said, that's a little bit of a stretch. I don't remember what the advocates' information on that point was. I do remember them referring to the gun control issue. Um, I, I did like the way you kind of dismissed the evidence from the advocate on that third point where you suggest, look, they got a vague study that's not, uh, you know, associated with any uh, particular uh, group or organization, and here is the study that I'm going to present from the American Psychiatric or Psychi Psychology Association, and, it, you know, and then you do a, this whole explanation about the data that's uh, provided there. I thought that uh, the conclusions of that were cited effectively, so that's good counter evidence on that particular point, and you got a little bit more contrast on that. Um, on the catharsis argument, I think there's an interesting point here that you say it seems to undermine the conclusion. I think you need to explain that Gesundheit, a little bit more clearly. Uh, if the advocate is saying that it doesn't have any effect, all right, that's your second Gesundheit. After that, you have to get well on your own. All right. Uh, if if um, if there isn't any effect, why would the cathartic effect be appropriate? And if there is an effect then the, you basically are saying that the effect is the opposite because the cathartic effect actually seems to increase their uh, aggressiveness in some way. That point was not quite as clear to me. I mean, I understood you know, the information you're presenting, but the conclusion that you're drawing from it is not as obvious as I think you think it is, and that's a little problematic. All right, thank you.